You are welcome to Believers Global TV. Like, subscribe, and share this message. So let's lift our hands in one minute and ask the Lord again to speak to us. Go ahead and pray in one minute. The Bible says, For everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door shall be opened. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you will help us, breathe upon us tonight. Grant us grace, grant us illumination. For in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Thank you again for this opportunity. We'll take off from where we left off yesterday. We began discussing a few things yesterday. I was teaching on the laws of exploits. The laws of exploits. And I started by challenging us on the necessity for extraordinary results. That it is important for the believer in Christ to command results. God is glorified when there is proof through our lives that serving God pays. Hallelujah. We considered a few scriptures yesterday that God desires and is glorified in our being fruitful. And then I challenged us that there are two dimensions of knowledge essentially as far as exploits is concerned. Number one, yesterday we said the knowledge of God. The Bible says the knowledge of him. Daniel 11.32. It says, but the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Second Peter 1, 2 and 3, the Bible says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of him. And we establish this, and let me please emphasize this uh, for the next minute or so, that when you begin your walk with God, remember, the first dimension of knowledge is not the knowledge of things, it's not the knowledge of principles, it is the knowledge of the person. When God calls you, he calls you to himself. He doesn't call you to an assignment. He doesn't call you to a mission. He doesn't call you to a ministry. That is the latter part of his dealings. He says, come, follow me. He called the disciples to be with him and then to represent him. Hallelujah. And so it's very important. Um, we must know God. And I did um, share with us yesterday that there are essentially three dimensions to the knowledge of God. When we seek to learn God, when we seek to know God, there are are three dimensions in that pursuit i only gave us two yesterday that number one we know god by learning his nature and his character his nature and his character when we know god's nature when we know god's character did you know that what we call the fruit of the spirit is actually an expression of god's nature that he seeks to be made manifest in the believer hallelujah yeah Galatians 5 22 it is the Bible says but the fruit of the spirit now King James and other older versions didn't do justice in expressing that because you would think he was talking about nine fruits as it were and even though that is applicable the truth is that the fruit of the spirit as it emanates from God is only one like the Holy Spirit love but then its expression all of those things called joy peace they are manifestations different dimensions of love just like you find in isaiah 11 same spirit but a sevenfold manifestation are we together yes so the the zenith god's nature the bible never says god has love god loves but god is love so you can learn god by learning his nature his nature the fruit of the spirit that when you see these manifestations in God, it will help you to distinguish between God and any other deity, between God and any other spirit. Are we together now? One of the ways that we, we set ourselves free from error and confusion is to learn the nature of God. 
Satan cannot mimic the nature of God. He can only mimic the power. Are we together? Yes. The nature of God is higher than his power. It's true. It is from his nature that his power flows because even faith works by love. Are we together now? So it's important for us to understand this. We learn God by learning his nature. Number two, we learn God by studying his power. This is profound. Psalm 63 and verse 2. He says, O Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul longs for you um, to see your power and your glory. So I have seen in, as I have seen in the sanctuary. It's important that we learn the power of God. Ephesians chapter 1, we read yesterday from verse 19. Among the many things Paul prayed that the church in Ephesus would come into the understanding of is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe. That means that we understand the vastness, the extent of his might and his power. Hallelujah. I resisted the temptation yesterday to tell you a few things about power. I don't want to distract my teaching today with that, but I think I feel compelled to say it that there is a difference between power and authority. Um, this may sound like an error, but it's important for your learning. This is a conference. God does not have authority. God cannot have authority. Authority is the legitimacy to use power. Are we together? Yes. And every time you bring authority, there are two things that must happen. One, you must give authority jurisdiction. We have a lot of judicial people here. There is no authority without jurisdiction. No kind of authority works indefinitely. What gives value to authority is that you define its jurisdiction. Number two, authority cannot function except a higher power supervises its use. Are we together? <laughs> so when you say God has authority, it means there has to be another being and a deity higher than him that number one defines his use of that power and number two supervises his compliance to the terms of use now all authority has been given to me jesus said when he became a man are we together now yes it is men that have authority and power as a man if you have power alone you are dangerous like an arm robber an arm robber has power in a gun, but has no authority. That is why he's arrested when he uses it. Versus a military man who has power and authority. So authority is the legitimacy to use power. Are we together? What God gave believers is not just power. Don't seek power alone. No, it is dangerous. He gives power and authority. Those who have power alone are rebels. The centurion understood this and he said for i am a man he never said i'm a powerful man he said i am a man under authority my power is derived from the authority i submit to and i say to one go and he will go to another come and he will come he said jesus i know that you did not just come with power as god incarnate manifest in the flesh you also have authority there were times where jesus was going to heal people he took them out of certain cities into certain cities to heal them and so when he resurrected, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth is the word exousia. The legitimacy to, to exercise power has been given to me. Are we together now? And I give you that same authority. God, the Father, does not have authority. He has absolute power. His power is not derived. He was not given it's not a product of conquest. He did not fight for it. He is the owner. Hmm. Are we together? If you don't understand this, one day demons will tell you, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? They will question your walking in power and question your walking in authority. Do you know the meaning of this? When God limits himself as far as exercising power, it is not weakness. It is for the sake of the saints. Many times we teach, and sincerely so, that 
if we don't give God permission, he cannot move. That is a very sincere theology, but it's not accurate. He is the owner of the power. If God vetoes your will, he is not in error. It is still his power. The earth is the Lord's. Number two, the fullness thereof. Number three, the walls. And number four, the inhabitants. They all belong to him. So if God decides to override your will, by what parameter do you say he is wrong? You see why the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Lying is based on a reference. And that reference does not apply to him. <laughs> that means if God decides that he's going to lift you tomorrow, there is no authority that questions him because there is no reference that supervises him. He submitted himself to his word, not because of weakness. Are we together now? It was a pattern so that we get to learn that he looked for one higher so that he would swear by. Not finding any, he swore by himself to convince you that by this oath and by this promise, he is dependable. You get that now? Hmm. Anyway, so you know God by knowing his power. The Bible says, our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. I have spoken once and twice, have you heard that power belonged to the Lord. I explained to us the concept of El Shaddai yesterday that El Shaddai means literally the multi-breasted one. It's an attempt to show his extent of sufficiency. Remember the example I gave us yesterday? That if a woman has two or three or four children, when she's breastfeeding them, two will have to be patient, no matter how loving she is, because she's limited. She cannot serve all of them at the same time. So when the Bible calls him the multi-breasted one, one does not have to suffer because he's attending to the other. He is that vast. His power can administer love to everyone without another person being affected. This is how mighty he is. When you know this, you will know that as God is touching someone in America, touching someone in Europe, his attention is not so, is, is not so busy that he cannot attend to you. You are talking to El Shaddai. Right now we are here, there is a conference somewhere across the globe. There is someone praying somewhere at a retreat. And the same God is hearing them and the same God will supply when you know that you can believe that this prayer that you have written there will be answered for the bible says and this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will he heareth us and that if he hears us then we know that we have our petitions granted you believe that shout amen, amen. so it's important that we know god the difference will be clear in this end time those who know God and those who do not. Hallelujah. Knowing God is not a gift. There is a labor to press, to study his nature. The end product of the knowledge of God is confidence. Please write it down. The end product of the knowledge of God is confidence. Your confidence is directly connected to your knowledge of God. And remember the Bible says to cast not away your confidence. And it gives you that the reason why. It says it has a great recompense of rewards. There are rewards connected to being confident. It was on the strength of the knowledge of God that David could stand before Goliath. It was on the strength of the knowledge of God that the nation of Israel could stand before their enemies. Even enemies stronger and greater than themselves. Hallelujah. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. John 17 and verse 3, we considered that yesterday. This is life eternal that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Hallelujah. At the apex of Paul's apostolic ministry, he vocalized his desire, his prayer point that I may know him not just that I may receive more from him that I may know him it is a very powerful prayer when you know God there are certain things that will lose their grip in your life it's true there are certain fears I told us yesterday that will die 
when you know God, when you encounter him. I've had the honor and privilege to have met him, not just by scripture. He has come to me. The Bible says, blessed is every man that the Lord causes to approach him. There are certain levels of audacity you cannot have theoretically. It is a product of a genuine encounter. Hallelujah. This is not about blind, bold face that leaves you with pain and, and shame and embarrassment. This is an encounter with proof. When Moses met him, it was clear. When Abraham met him, it was clear. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you that as this, as this service is ongoing, may someone come into an encounter with the God of the Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The capacity to believe God, like you will be learning today, what you call faith, is a direct product of the confidence that is derived from your knowing God. Hallelujah. There are certain fears that do not exist again when you meet him, when you know him. Every time God tells me to do daring things, and the moment... The human nature wants to step in because of the magnitude the spirit of god quickens the encounter of him that i had and doubt and fear dies immediately this is also the kind of revelation that sponsors creative miracles one day you will stand before situations that will challenge you and if you do not have an encounter bigger than that obstacle you will regret being a christian at that point because you will wonder why did i give my life to christ because I'm now mandated to bring this deliverance, this healing, this breakthrough. And the mountains are staring you. And there are times you need to know the one who is called the Lord, Yahweh. The earth is the Lord's. If you know that there are, you will be secured. Listen, the knowledge of God has a therapeutic effect. The average African, the average Nigerian has been wounded from their background as a result of poverty or deprivation. And there is only so much counseling and human therapy can do. When his majesty appears to you and tells you he loves you, it, it, it imprints something upon your heart. It says, I have loved you with an everlasting love and with my loving kindness I have drawn you. You want to be secured? Know God. When you know God and you have an, a revelation of the one you look like, you will resist naturally the pressure to become anything, to please people. No, 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 no. no. All those things die permanently. I'm telling you this. Cast not away your confidence, for it has a great recompense of reward. Are we together now? So, today we're going to just take it up from there and then we'll pray by the spirit of god so lend me your attention the second dimension of knowledge that we need for our exploits in the kingdom is the knowledge of his ways the knowledge of his ways what we call the mysteries of the kingdom we're considering the laws of exploits hallelujah that second to the knowledge of god it is important that we understand the mysteries of the kingdom. And please, I want you to truly, truly lend me your attention because this is where many believers get defeated. This is where many believers get cheated in life and destiny because they hope that just because God loves them, they hope that just because they are Christians, sincere Christians, that life will just happen for them in a way that their lives will become an expression of the glory of God. And many eventually get disappointed. This is true for ministers, true for business people, family people, and so on. In Ephesians 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, Blessed, it says, Blessed be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please give it to us. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's finish it together. One to go. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Notice that description. The Bible says the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ hath blessed us. The us, every believer. But he says he's blessed us with all, not some. All spiritual blessings 
and the bible says in heavenly places and in christ very powerful information in first corinthians chapter 2 i believe let's read verse 12 first corinthians 2 and verse 12 first corinthians 2 and verse 12 the bible says now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god to what end that we might know the things that are freely given to us of god the bible will tell us that no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it entered into the heart of man what god has in store for them that love him he says but the spirit of god are we together now that the spirit of god has the singular assignment of making that which is in the heart of the father revealed to reveal it to the saints and the bible says that we have not received the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we may know the things that are freely given to us second peter chapter one when we read from verse four the bible says wherefore i like verse four second peter chapter one please give us verse four whereby are given unto us is someone following exceeding great and precious promises it says by these promises that means when you take a hold of these promises and they become manifest in your life they validate the fact that in experience you have become a partaker of his divine nature haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss that means the zoe life that you have now received can only be made manifest to the scene of all men when you embrace these mysteries of the kingdom and engage them with understanding the difference between any two believers is not the love of god it's not even the will of god is the degree to which they have come into an experiential comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom are we together now so we define our possibilities in this kingdom to the degree to which we understand the ways of God. This is very powerful. Our world is full of all kinds of believers. There are believers who consistently live defeated lives. Well-meaning, sincere believers. And they wonder why their lives are not able to speak his praises. And many times they think it's the will of God. But the will of God is not left. Uh, I mean, the will of God, we are not as a, at a loss. The Bible tells us that the Spirit of God has the singular assignment of bringing us into an understanding of the will of God. Is someone learning now? So just because you see a believer living a defeated life, sincerely so, does not mean that his condition is a reflection of God's desire for him. God's desire is captured clearly and revealed in his word. I am come, John 10, 10, that ye may have life. In fact, it starts by saying the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He says, I am come, listen carefully, that ye may have life. He was not talking to a preacher. He was not talking to a businessman. He was talking to any and every believer. I am come. That ye may have life and that you have that life more abundantly. Do you believe this? The Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. That it shineth more and more unto the perfect day. More and more in ministry. More and more in business. More and more in your home. In God's mind, no believer should have a better yesterday. No, in his economy, your yesterday should never be better than your tomorrow more and more more and more that means the last time you sh you see me should be the least level you see me in that the next time you see me i should be a greater manifestation of the glory of god the bible says even among the stars one different from another in glory say in the name of jesus shout it with faith in the name of jesus i decree and declare that my life must become a manifestation of the glory of god one more time my life must become a manifestation of the glory of god believe this 
Apostle, but there is nothing in my life now that is an expression of what I just said. Did your Bible not say, for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, it says, that it worketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. In fact, it says in Romans 8, 18, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, he says, are not worthy to be compared with the glory. There is a dimension of God's glory that should be revealed in us. For the endless expectation of creation, he says, awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. You have to believe this. You have to believe this. This is how exploit comes. If you do not believe that it is in your destiny to become a reflection of the glory of God, you will live a weak and a defeated Christian life, blaming everybody and blaming everything reject every lie the devil has told you i don't care what is happening or not happening in your life you are in an atmosphere of faith my assignment is to shake away unbelief from your life believe that it is in your destiny to become a reflection of god's glory and while believing don't mind the naysayers while believing don't mind the situation there is a force in the spirit that can change things to be consistent with the will of god do you believe this there are few people in life who had the honor of being born great by our natural description of greatness many people found these principles and began to push their way let me tell you the truth there is no space waiting for you in destiny you create your space with understanding the illusion that there is a space waiting for you is a joke an expensive joke If it will ever happen in your destiny there is a responsibility component my assignment tonight as we proceed is to get you angry you keep giving last year's excuses this year will look like last year you need to get angry in your spirit as a preacher as a business person it is not a blind anger it's an anger that is supported by light it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new light hallelujah so when you know him your next assignment is to now begin to learn methodically the mysteries of the kingdom are the only ladders by which the saints ascend to the place of destiny these mysteries are ladders they are not an information that is what you climb to make prophecy happen it does not happen because it was spoken to you no there are many things that God and prophets said to people in the Bible that did not come to pass because that which they should do as far as engaging prophecy was not done the Bible says forever oh Lord your word is settled not everywhere in heaven in heaven not in your life there is something you must do to make it settled please sit down are we learning so the bible tells us that god has given us all things all things every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in christ but watch this now let's go to job chapter 38 and verse 33 let me your attention now job was having a discussion with god at this point job was frustrated he could not make sense of the things that had been happening around his life back to back to back to back this guy kept hearing bad news i i, I wonder how the kind of emotional strength job had is noteworthy that in one day you come with a report you lose your estate you lose your children and there is always one witness left at the end of it the bible says he bowed down and he worshiped but he did not stop there one day job got angry and he said god we need to talk 
we need to talk and then God asked Job one question that he's asking you tonight this question holds the key to your exploits this year I'm praying that God will open your eyes to see let's read together if we can have NIV else that would be fine Job 38 and verse 33 it says knowest thou all right go ahead NIV ready let's read one to read do you know the laws of the heavens and can you set up God's dominion using those laws in the earth do you know the laws that regulate heaven heaven is not just heaven just because God is there there are mysteries that make heaven a place of dexterity he says have you mastered the art of transporting those realities it is by those realities you will exert dominion upon the earth do you know the laws of the heavens and can you use them to set up God's dominion not on the earth over the earth what makes heaven so dexterous there is no record of God roaming around heaven supervising loyalty yet disloyalty is judged immediately what law did he put in place what makes heaven a place of abundance what makes heaven a place of love he's saying that those realities you can take those principles and transport them to your life he says let it be done in earth not on earth as it is done in heaven your kingdom come thy will be done in earth the first earth is not the ground you the earthen vessel let his will be done in your life listen when Jesus was teaching us to pray, this is what he said. He said, when you pray, pray thus, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Notice now, your kingdom come. Do you know why? Because when his kingdom comes and his will is being done, the remaining part of the prayer, you will not need to pray it again. Give us our daily bread, forgive us our sins. Are we together now? That those other parts of the prayer only become necessary because his kingdom has not come and his will has not been done. Hallelujah. So, the believer's life is at the mercy of your understanding. Please sit down and engage in the mysteries of the kingdom. Now, please pay attention. I have taught you that the word of God is a compendium of all the possibilities that are contained in God. Are we together? Every time you open the Bible, you are interacting with the mysteries of the kingdom. These are the forces that control dominion. Dominion is not an impartation. You have heard me say it. It's the resultant effect of your understanding and engaging the mysteries of the kingdom. You define your possibilities upon the strength of understanding. What are the possibilities that are available for us in Christ? Lend me your attention as I list them for you. Favor, speed, lifting. In fact, you find them captured in the worship that was in Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 5. Worthy is the lamb that was slain, he said, to receive for us. And he begins to list them, seven of them. But there are many more. Everything that makes for the revelation of the glory of God in your life is connected to a mystery let me repeat myself everything that makes for the revelation of the glory of god in your life is connected to a mystery look up please financial prosperity is connected to a mystery divine health and healing is connected to a mystery speed is connected to a mystery honor connected to a mystery favor connected to a mystery longevity connected to a mystery influence connected to a mystery are we together now the anointing even in ever increasing dimensions connected to a mystery don't just desire the outcomes you must learn the mysteries that connect to the results you desire so there is just blind desire with all due respect in the body of christ the average believer can tell you what he desires instinctively we know that if my life becomes a capture of health passion consecration prosperity speed honor imagine that kind of believer paint that picture in your mind such a wholesome believer that has a rich capture of the glory of god but the average believer cannot explain to you intelligently the mysteries that are connected to their desires 
King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Listen, as I'm speaking to you, you are not just hearing a man. There is an anointing that is quickening your spirit. Something is happening to you. I'm not a lecturer. Are we together? These are spirit communications. Something is happening within your spirit, man, that will stop you from being ordinary. He said in Ezekiel 2 and verse 2, And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me. The mysteries of the kingdom. So when you find certain believers living exceptional lives through diligence, through submission to instructions, taking advantage of the grace of God, they have found one or more or many. And you see, the keys for your dominion are finite. They are not infinite. Like a curriculum that a student passes through. His learning continues, but you can exhaust a curriculum. The Bible calls it marvelous light. It is the curriculum that controls our dominion. You can exhaust it and know you have held the keys of the kingdom. Do you believe this? So you will find men who experience this transition in the spirit on account of light. Something would have happened to them. And you see certain results godlike in their nature these are not results that humans can afford you don't get it in the bank you don't get it in the marketplace they have mastered the art of importing divine realities from the realm of the spirit to be made manifest here and now this is what it means to be a living epistle that your life becomes a continuation of someone's bible study God refers you to men who want to learn him. Your life is an unending un, un wonder. Not a theoretical wonder. Not an assumed wonder. Is someone learning? Now please look at me. I'm standing right here with several prayer requests. There are several of them here. I'm sure there are several of them that will be coming. Did you know? That almost every one prayer request here that you see there is a mystery that is connected to that outcome did you hear what I said it is true for most people their major problem centers around finances or perhaps their health are we together or perhaps a job perhaps some destiny helper to lend you their attention did you know that nothing just happens this is where both science and religion agree. Talk to me, intelligent people. You went to school. Yeah. Sir Isaac Newton, in his study of mechanics, he postulated certain laws. And remember, one of the laws says, a body in a uniform motion or state of rest, it will remain that way, except compelled by an external force to act otherwise. What is the meaning of that? That means every condition remains like that until a force greater than what keeps it is exerted. It is true. It is true. Listen, this is not entertainment. This is your destiny. Everything. That means this year will be like last year and every other year until you engage something this year that you did not engage last year. hallelujah what do you know that controls speed what do you know that controls favor you believe people will just like you like that whereas god already told you that the whole world lies in wickedness in this biased bedeviled world who will forget about their problems and suddenly focus on you no there is an energy that light brings it compels creation to respond to you in a certain way please find a way of believing this it is true man of god i hate to be a bearer of bad news but ministry this year will be like last year until you show me the light that bails you out yes sir yes sir i like the bible arise it says and shine it says for your light not for time has gone mm -mm. 
for your light has come for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen on upon you it says for darkness shall cover the earth to who are bohu confusion and chaos and darkness the people it says but upon you the glory of god shall arise i receive verse 3 for myself it says gentiles shall come shall come of course nobody leaves what works gentiles shall come to your light not to you to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising may this be your testimony in the name of jesus the son of the living god that the level and the extent of light that will rest upon you you will command dominion you will tame life like an animal upon the strength of understanding you believe that shout amen please sit down please sit down so what most believers do is to just guess and hope this is really the punchline in my discussion that guessing and hoping and wishing for time to on its own deliver to you that which you desire will leave you disappointed i don't have to be a prophet to tell you the word of god already tells us there was a man who who in john 5 he lay down near a pool reverend sam for 38 years I hope you know 38 years starts with one year then two years then three years he would have said no by the fourth year no he remained there and every year the possibility for his deliverance kept happening the oldest situation that the bible names the bible gives timing to tragedies that man's own was the highest we know aside from the nation of israel that a single man he sat down there proximity to the source of deliverance but one year became two years three years four years five years by the 15th year they had given birth to somebody who came and joined him there and the person left and left the person there then jesus came to him and said why are you in this condition and he said i have no man he knew the power of relationships but that was the only mystery he knew he didn't know that there are other mysteries also hmm. the danger of knowing only there are many people who know some things but not sufficient to give them the victory they desire reminds me of a very great man of god in acts chapter 18. the bible tells us that this man was born at alexandria eloquent in scripture fervent in spirit but he knew only the baptism of john you must be aware of the knowing only syndrome <laughs> it is not a key every every house here has several keys reverend sam and just because you have the key that brings you inside the house does not mean you have the keys to the rooms the kitchen can be locked you are in the house but you do not have the key to the kitchen you will know the value of that key when you are hungry am i right on that When you see people walk in dominion it is not just their persona it is that within them they have held keys when they stand before the things that plague men they check within their spiritual archives and there is a key there is a key oh i don't like you we leave you you're not getting this job again and rather than crying they smile because there is another key they know what to engage that will wake a destiny helper up all through the night did the bible not say someone came to knock a door of his friend and he said no it's too late and there was something he did he wanted only three loaves but the friend gave him as many as he wanted do you know what that key is you see the stories and the parables in the bible are beyond just a storyline within them there are mysteries the bible says revelation in the knowledge of him so revelation is hidden in knowledge just because you have knowledge does not mean it has been revealed to you revelation is a mystery that is hidden in knowledge you can read a story and then find the light from within it hallelujah 
Apostle, I want to experience favor this year. Can I know what you have engaged or are engaging for the favor? I just know God will do it. I entered this, this year believing God. Let me tell you up front, I really hate to be a bearer of bad news, but you are already programming disappointment because it doesn't happen that way. Light of the world, you've stepped down to my darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. That should be your prayer. You're the light of the world. You've stepped down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Will you open my eyes, let me see. Open my eyes, let me see. That God will show you the way out. I'm waiting for my uncle to get an appointment. He promised me that when he gets it, he will give me a job. Hmm. Whereas your uncle is also waiting for help. So you become pained and you become frustrated. But is it not in your Bible that they looked unto him and their faces were lightened? Except you do not believe it. I hope you are not just shouting yes for nothing. You really believe what I'm saying? Yes. So there are many people who say want to prosper. Let me talk about two areas that concern us. This issue of finances, you see how it has embarrassed a lot of believers. And there are two groups, those who pretend they don't need it and those who are obsessed around it. Both of them are in trouble. You see that now. So God, does God help men economically? Yes. But how does he do it? How does God do it? There are many economic principles. Which one do you know? And which one do you not know? Are we together now? Essentially, God helps men by empowering them with wisdom. Empowering them with productivity and giving them direction. This has been his eternal strategy for empowering men. The power to prosper works threefold. The first place it works is on your mind, not your bank account. It alters your understanding. It brings you to a state of illumination. Then the blessing of the Lord rests upon the work of your hands. Then it grants you direction. The Lord is my shepherd, he says. I shall not want. Is someone learning now? Another way God prospers men in the kingdom is by connecting them to those he has already helped and causing them to have favor towards you. Listen, if you are not Abraham, the moment you find out you are Lord, start respecting Abraham. If not, you are going to suffer. The easiest way God helps men financially, especially when time has gone, beyond productivity is relationships. When God wants to show a man mercy fast so that he will catch up, he will look for Abraham and teach you how to be a wise lot before him. Because when God spoke to Abraham, Lot was not there. And if you do not know how to be wise as Lot, you will not maximize the blessing that was on Abraham. If you do not know how to be Ruth with wisdom, you will not be able to glean from the vineyard of Boaz. Ruth did not need to farm and wait for harvest. She only needed to secure favor from Boaz and she had the advantage of gleaning from the farm. And he gave an instruction that it should not be done once. The classic character of favor. It does not happen only once. It happens again and again and again. How about walking in divine health? Ladies and gentlemen, are you not aware that Satan is determined to destroy the bodies of men? Because there is a law that your spirit can only remain if your body sustains a certain health level. Are we together? Every human being is given the gift of one body per lifetime. One body, not two. One body per lifetime. And the condition for your spirit to remain is that your body must have a certain health condition if it deteriorates beyond a certain threshold your spirit will leave whether it is your time or not so one of the ways that satan aborts the purposes of god is to create deterioration in your body and bring a separation between your spirit and your body he says a body has thou prepared for me 
Are we together now? That means you have a responsibility to remain healthy. But it does not just happen by hoping. There are keys. There are keys. My God, there are keys. There are keys. Number one is to know that longevity is your portion in Christ. You have to believe that. Not out of fear. But there are keys. Number one, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The degree to which you plunge yourself in God's program can secure your longevity. Number two, honor your father and your mother in the Lord, that it may be well with you and that your days may be long. Number three, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. I advise you choose life. You choose life by verbalizing it and taking pro-life decisions like your health, like eating well, like your exercise. All of those are your commitment towards living healthy. You can't just claim longevity and ignore the mysteries connected to it. Is someone learning now? The Bible tells us that the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. That means if one man is not standing on your side, you will suffer as if Jesus did not die. This is the world of men. Don't ignore men. No. That means you have to learn relational principles that give you an edge in life. You are gifted without relationships, you will be alone. The strength of productivity is in its connection. Be fruitful means be connected. Biology teaches us that fruitfulness is a product of relationships. It is on the strength of connection of a husband and a wife that a baby comes. If you are that husband, what other relationship will serve as the other part that makes be fruitful happen? Are we together now? Is someone learning? So there are many people who do not understand, for instance, the principle of honor relational principles and yet they continue to pray lord bring my destiny helper you have said it i even saw it in my dream a man of god spoke to me and heaven wants you to experience that dimension of god's glory but the mystery connected to it you are not interested in learning it and so good people and good things continue to pass you because you have not been able to attract good people through your character, your cautiousness, your sense of relationship. And whenever it is taught in church, the devil will make you believe it is too elementary and you ignore it to your peril, recycling pain again and again and again. Who hates you does not matter, but who likes you in this world? Oh yes, it does matter. Ask Ahasuerus, ask Boaz, Vashti is hated, she loses her throne immediately. A village girl is loved, she becomes queen immediately. Someone who was crying for losing all the men in her life, she carries this favor and she heads straight to the vineyard of Boaz and Boaz likes her and tells the men nobody should waylay and, and, and oppress this lady. Leave her to glean, just like that. She returns back to Naomi and says, I found favor. To cut the, lo the long story short, she's given a chance again to enjoy destiny. Another side of destiny. Are we together now? These are the forces that men engage. There are people who may not be so gifted, they may not be so skilled, but they have found the keys to relationships, for instance, and they command all kinds and all dimensions of success. How about the anointing? There are many people who know the value of the anointing, but they do not know the price for the anointing. Knowing the value, the importance, the usefulness of the anointing is wonderful. But do you know the price for the anointing? Many people just want to claim. The average believer just knows that the only way to be anointed is to find an anointed person, kneel down perhaps with a seed on your hand, and then he lays hands on you. There are dimensions of the anointing that are not transferable. It is not every part of the anointing that is transferable. There are wells in the spirit that you must dig by yourself. It's an illusion to believe that every dimension of the anointing is transferable. No, no, no. 
there are certain prayers when they pray for you it's not the anointing that was transferred it's the hunger of the person who has it that it transferred to you that hunger is what will drive you to the secret place and you begin to dig your well taking advantage of the enabling of the spirit until you there is something about God you must know to carry that anointing so it will not just come because hands were laid on you no what you carry is the hunger that begins to lead you to start that experience with God So many people want to be anointed. Our generation has come into a very healthy appreciation of the anointing. We know what the anointing can do, but there is a price for it. The price is not just prayer. The price is not just fasting. It's not just Bible study. The greatest price for the anointing is a correct heart. Your heart condition is greater than your prayer life. Your heart condition is greater than your fasting. I can tell you. All those other spiritual exercises only find their place when your heart is right. The psalmist says, create in me a clean heart. Then he says, renew a right spirit within me. This is the psalmist praying. Hallelujah. I don't want to go into showing you, but let's try it. Second Chronicles chapter 25. I think verse 2. Please give it to us. Is God speaking to someone now? let's read verse 2 ready everybody one to read and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord but not with a perfect heart look at this scripture how do you do what is right prayer is right fasting is right giving is right coming to church is right serving is right but the Bible says that is not enough to draw the attention of God your heart condition is what gives value to every spiritual activity he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord but the only thing that was wrong was his heart condition hallelujah there are believers who want to command power for instance and they do not want to invest in the ministry of prayer they do not want to invest in the ministry of the word the average believer is bankrupt of light they are not aware of the exceeding great and precious promises sample two believers and mention several areas in in their lives and tell them to defend their results with one scripture each you will be disappointed and pained convince me that you have found light in the area of your health one scripture maybe i just know god will do it it's, it's a it's a very lazy way of contending for growth did you hear my description very lazy way of contending for growth nobody becomes a winner that way no. the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of hallelujah when men say there is a casting down for me i say that there is a lifting up i realize that to connect with the supplies of heaven there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth so when i give it's not just a bribe in the house of the lord my my giving is supported by superior understanding when i come to a man of god and drop a seed i'm not copying a ritual i saw somewhere or just to ease the guilt i bring that seed with understanding and i know I understand what is happening in the realm of the spirit when i get up in the night to pray i'm not just doing some spiritual jamboree i am praying because i have found out that it is a mystery that controls definite outcomes in the spirit he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first thessalonians 5 17 to pray without ceasing james 5 13 it says if any man afflicted let him pray mark 11 24 what things soever ye desire he says when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them what scripture supports your confidence in life what scripture makes you believe that your possibilities will be different in spite of the plunging economy across the nations have you defined your reality this is what exploit is about you want to thrive you have to know the exceeding great and precious promises and then know the conditions connected to the delivery of the results you desire what mystery controls favor 
what mystery controls longevity what mystery controls um lifting how do you know you will be promoted in the place of your job oh because it's my tribesman who just assumed the office no 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 what makes you believe as a man of god that people will still be interested in hearing you just because they had you last year does not mean they want to hear you now and they have a right to want to stop hearing you hmm. are we together it says my heart is indicting a good matter yea i speak of excellent things that my tongue is the pen of a ready writer that every time you speak there are ears it's like an artist you are writing upon the destinies of men Gideon blew a shofar and 33,000 people gathered together. What gives you the confidence as a leader that the loyalty of those who work with you will remain? In this bedeviled world where people can vacillate their loyalty. What is the key? The Bible says that if you are prepared to lose, you will keep. But when you keep, you will lose. Have you understood that mystery? For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Apostle, my own is that I want promotion. God has been talking to me about promotion. Do you know what controls promotion? It's not just prayer. It's competence. 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 Yes, sir. See it thou, he said, the gift of a man. Make it room. It didn't say shows him where the room is. It makes room. It pushes everything until it creates his space for him. Joseph was anointed, but Joseph was competent. It was not interpreting the dream that made him prime minister. He's providing solution on account of his knowledge of the dream. He offered an economic solution, intelligently communicated. And the king said, there is no such one this moment without interview without discussion there are many believers if you employ them you will regret employing them not because there's something wrong with their spirituality the value component is almost zero and they don't care they don't mind why do i invite you and then my organization goes down i love you but i love my organization so while you are preparing for favor and rising, you understand that competence is a weapon, is a ladder. You can ascend heights unknown. So while you are waiting for the job, you are fanning your value. It's proof that you are ready to experience that dimension of the glory of God. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Am I challenging someone? We're going to pray. With all due respect, you're a minister of the gospel here. Please listen. There are many options today and people will not tolerate incompetence again. You don't hold a mic and waste the time of intelligent people while praying that God will fill your church with people. People are spiritual but they are not dummies. Are we together? Now, I'm not being insultive. I'm challenging you. Young man, you are planning to go into ministry. Don't pray alone. Buy the truth. Buy the truth with humility. Submit yourself and learn. A man of God is a communicator of ideas. They are spiritual in origin, but their value must be felt within the cosmos. That people carry life applicable principles that come from scripture and they can watch their lives improve. I have taught you that nobody lives what works. A man will not carry his family and children and come and become members of your church and you are just, you are disoriented and confused every week. No, they will sympathize with you but they, they love their destiny and they will leave. And it's not a demonic attack. It's the byproduct of ignorance. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Is that still in your Bible? A workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth i vowed before god that i will never stand before a people and stand confused disoriented and wrap up everything with amen no 
these are thoughts and ideas that are empowered by the spirit but that an intelligent person can go back and meditate and contemplate on the ideas there must be a point of application to your communication this thing you see is not just a product of grace alone there is a place of diligence am i wasting your time How do you know you are ready? Because men will start looking for you. If men do not look for you, it is because you are not prepared enough. It's an uncomfortable truth, but admit it right now, responsibly. I tell you the truth. Competence is a scarce product. It's impossible to see it and ignore it. When, when a truck that is carrying fuel diesel or petrol when it has an accident sometimes with the risk involved you will see people still trying to scoop that is to tell you the kind of value they place on it the world does not ignore genuine value there is assumed value there is value where you flatter yourself comparing yourself with mediocres but there is value that can stand any standard the beauty of grace is when it comes upon a transformed vessel the beauty of grace is when it comes upon a prepared vessel. The beauty of grace is when it comes upon competence. The full potential of grace is demonstrated in the presence of competence. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way. We're going to pray and I'll minister to us shortly, but I want you to listen, ladies and gentlemen. I gave you an assignment yesterday. Let me give you one more. Would you do me a favor by going back home to write the various aspects of your life where you are yet to see the glory of God manifest? One of the principles of faith is vision. You have to give definition to your expectations. God cannot meet nothing. Give us this day what our daily bread when your expectations are defined, even psychology teaches that with, in the presence of definition, you are more prone to obtaining your results. It is true. Most believers do not have definition to their expectation. So you ask them, what do you want God to do? They will just say general blessings, you know, every part of my life. It's too vague. How do you know when God has come through? Go back and write. With clarity, with precision. This is what I'm trusting God to do. There is a height in the spirit I'm trusting God to take me. Perhaps you're a man of God. There is a time to invest in prayer and the word. I have discerned laxity in my spiritual life. And I'm trusting that this year as a goal, that I will extend realms and height. You write it. So that when it happens, you can give God definite things. How about your finances? As a responsible father, responsible mother, you look at the reality of the prevailing economy and begin to write what are your expectations the bible says what things soever ye desire they have a name give definition to them you are a man of god you are trusting god for increase don't pray a blind prayer and say god just bring people that is not an intelligent prayer no the bible says watch and pray watch is a product of your mind that your mind has to be involved in your prayer to make it profitable increase has a definition what are you trusting god for and then god begins to prepare you to be the kind of man of god that can minister to the people you are praying to come are we together you want to excel academically for instance lord grant me grace there is the quickening of the spirit that can happen to your mind Eli who said there is a spirit in man chapter 32 and verse 8 he says the breath of the almighty Give it men understanding. Job 32 and verse 8. There is a spirit in man. That the spirit of God can quicken your understanding. God-like comprehension. Exceeding great and precious promises. But for this service, you have come with hunger. You have come with expectation. Among the many things that happen when we are gathered is that we experience his benefits let me list five of them and then we pray psalm 103 
Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, verse 1 says. Are we together? Media, help us. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, verse 2. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. There are benefits when we come to God. Five of them. Walk with me. Number three. The Bible says, who forgiveth thine iniquities. That means every time we're gathered unto the Lord like we are tonight, we expect his grace to be available to administer forgiveness. Number two, who healed all thy diseases. Please back up a bit. Thank you. Who healed how many? Say all. Let the issue concerning your health hear you confess. Say all. Who healed all thy diseases. Number four. The Bible says, who redeemed thy life from destruction? That is deliverance. Deliverance is not just casting out spirit. It's separating men from conditions. It's not only spirits. You can be separated from a condition. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? That is called honor. And then the final verse, who satisfied your mouth? with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles when i come to god i come believing that number one he exists but number two on account of these promises that he's a rewarder he's a rewarder rewarding your sacrifice you've been laboring from the start of this conference that includes those who are following online the next few minutes that we're going to be having i like you to give your destiny dedicated attention plunge yourself in the prayer let your heart be open trust god to visit you and by the way let me encourage those who are yet to submit their prayer request if you're yet to submit your prayer request please do well just wave it where you are and ushers please can you help us let's just walk around so we pick it and um perhaps you may want to pass it to someone by the right or left to make it easier for the ushers and for those of you online i'm sure there should be a way of getting your request we're about to pray right now why do we pray because god is ever ready to hear us and to answer us why do we pray because prayer is the authorized platform to communicate our needs and our petitions the bible says what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them philippians 4 6 it says be anxious for nothing but in everything how many things everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says let your request be made known unto god why do we pray because the bible says ye have not because ye ask not there is a promise in scripture that to everyone who asks that he will receive matthew 7 and verse 7 it says ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find knock it says and it shall be opened unto you we want to ask right now in prayer i'm a firm believer in the power of god i've seen him do miraculous things and my goodness that you will glorify jesus in this place today are you ready if you're still writing let me give you a few seconds to write perhaps your faith has been challenged and you want to still add a few things the bible says ephesians 3 20 now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us it says to him be the glory in the church even by christ jesus amen so we are talking to a God who hears. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. I believe in Jesus. I believe in his power to heal. Ensure that within the next five minutes or so that we have, that you will not walk out of this place with any infirmity in your body everything that is inconsistent with god's desire for you as revealed in scripture you have a responsibility to partner with the spirit of god and partner with the word to get it out of your life do you believe that rise up on your feet and let's pray for a minute and then i speak over your life someone who is full of faith begin to pray in the spirit in one minute pray in the spirit in one minute Pray in the spirit in one minute. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory 
you lift my head but thou O oh Lord are the shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head but thou O oh Lord are the shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh Lord and a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head say after me as loud as you can say father, father. one more time say father. father in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that my life will be a revelation of the glory of God I receive by faith all your promises for me go ahead and begin to pray i receive someone is praying i receive in the name of jesus go ahead and pray and this is the confidence that we have in him that when we ask anything according to his will he heareth us go ahead and pray oh i receive by faith go ahead and pray divine health speed favor liftings by the power of the holy ghost Online pray, outside pray, man of God pray, businessman pray, worshippers pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus now i'm just going to speak over the sick i feel stirred in my heart to pray we may not have time to take the testimonies but you can take that uh, you know on sunday you can come and testify but i want to pray particularly for the sick and then i want to speak the favor of god over your life and then we'll do the prayer there are many things to pray for but these two things your body and then to program a climate of favor over you many people have disrespected the power of the prophetic you will be joking just because there are abuses and imbalances does not mean you throw away the prophetic ministry it's an advantage that god gave us we transit realms we are changed upon the power of prophecy hallelujah i want to pray for the sick now listen to me the revelation behind healing is God's commitment to preserve your body and to give you the vitality needed to serve him and to represent him it's important you understand this when the sick are healed is beyond an attestation that a man of God is anointed no God's goal is way bigger than that it is God's commitment towards giving you sustained vitality it says they that be planted in the house of God it says they will flourish in the courts of our God that even in old age they will be fat and flourishing it then means that if you tolerate infirmity and sickness of any kind and any sort in your body it is your participation with darkness to cut short your life every manifestation of sickness is death being administered in a measure and according to the pattern of how satan works when he touches an area and you allow him unrestrained he will move further this is what he did to the church the early church the bible says herod made a commitment to vex certain jews and they caught james and beheaded james and the church kept quiet when he saw that it pleased the people the bible said he proceeded further satan touches your health you are quiet he proceeds further to your children proceeds further to your finances but then when we get to verse 5 the church became angry the bible says while he was waiting 
so that when you know the feast was over the bible says the church came together but prayer was made by the church unto god for him and angels came to the rescue the same angels that rescued peter were available to rescue james so as i pray for you make sure you do not entertain any trace of infirmity and sickness in your body as jesus taught the bible says the power of god was present the presence of the power does not mean it is administered to you it has to be received by faith healing is governed by the hearing of faith the hearing of faith that god wants to heal you and then you open up your hearts to receive when you receive by faith every time jesus healed the sick he did not leave them that way he would always ask them to take steps in response to their belief this is the definition of faith faith is not just believing god faith is the name given to your response of obedience as proof that you believe believing god is part of the process that leads to faith but it is not faith until there is a response in obedience it is not faith in one word faith is obedience faith is not action faith is obedience you can act in disobedience jonah acted but in disobedience we do not call his action faith because it was against the word of god your action must be consistent to the word of god and the instruction that has come are we together yes lay your hands right now i want to pray for you standing in faith with reverend sam i want to pray for you for as long as i live i will see to it that everyone who is sick oppressed of the devil according to acts 10 38 that they have a chance to experience the power of god he said how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about on the strength of that empowerment doing good and healing all not some they that were oppressed of the devil it says for god was with him acts chapter 10 when you read from verse 34 they said god is no respecter of persons i like that scripture that god is no respecter of persons god is no respecter of persons i want to pray for you lay your hands now if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest by faith you can stand in for your loved one perhaps some mother somewhere trusting god for a miracle deliverance from any kind whatever it is lay your hands there right from the moments of worship as we enjoy the presence of god here we building momentum in the spirit and now that the word has come god's power is available to bring you healing healing right here on site healing online across distance is no barrier and I want you to believe as I speak, they are not empty words, they are empowered. There is a throne that backs our speakings. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome me in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands by faith upon everyone who is sick in their bodies i'm seeing people lift medical reports i'm seeing people lifting photos of their loved ones i want you to connect by faith i'm about to speak to you now the bible says by his stripes we were healed peter said the spirits that are at the back of every infirmity here represented in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god we take authority over those spirits now shout a believing amen now shout a believing amen now every spirit that is back of any infirmity plaguing god's people i decree and i declare that you give way now and i minister the life and the power of jesus to your body i declare be healed now be healed now be healed now my God be healed now eye conditions be healed now blood conditions of any kind and any sort be healed now bone conditions 
be healed now I tell you I sense such a strong anointing of the Spirit of God I'm praying for someone who has a severe pain around your ankle in the name that is above all names be healed this moment there is a lady your left eye you are seeing please help them in the name of Jesus I'm seeing you have severe pain when you look it's like you are look you are, you are seeing an object your left eye the power of God is touching you right now I bring you life I bring you healing in the name of Jesus I've seen these kinds of conditions many times and the Lord is asking me to announce it again you are a lady your circle happens twice a month it is very irregular it comes with excruciating pain the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus Christ I cast that devil from your body all kinds of growths fibroids lumps I declare they die now in the name of Jesus Christ you're having severe pain especially at the left side of your neck when you turn it this happened when you woke up one morning I'm praying for you now the power of God is touching you this moment I don't know what hospital is in Garki but I'm seeing someone in a hospital there and the power of God is touching that person right now Garki a hospital there in the name that is above all names let there be a miracle for you right now let there be a miracle for you right now I'm seeing a woman sit on a chair and holding a child this child should be about maybe four or five years he has autism autism this is what is wrong with that child this is a woman from United Kingdom you are sitting with your child he has autism let the power of God touch that child now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus you are having problems with your knee your knee particularly your kneecap you're not able to bend this way not without pain the power of God is touching you right now the Lord is showing me a lady you had a dream in that dream you saw yourself breastfeeding a baby from the time you woke up you've been having excruciating pain particularly the right side of your breast I cause that spirit right now I cause that spirit right now lumbar spondylosis be healed peptic ulcer be healed migraine headaches be healed I say it again migraine headaches be healed I command cancer to die sugar diabetes be healed pile the Lord is healing someone from pile painful pile be healed in Jesus name I'm seeing somebody having recurrent malaria recurrent it keeps coming you treat it it comes you treat it I command that spirit to give way now in the name of Jesus Christ there's someone having your heart is not palpitating but you are having breathing problems if you lie down in a room you know how an asthma patient is you don't have asthma but this thing affects your breathing I'm seeing sometimes you stand close to the window so you are able to breathe enough air I want to pray for you anything wrong with your veins and your arteries that the devil is programming death no matter what it is called I curse it now by the God of heaven in the name of Jesus heart palpitations be healed lupus be healed rheumatoid arthritis be healed in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is showing me a man I'm seeing a man sitting you are beginning to have the initial stages of prostate cancer in the name that is above all names wherever you are whether you are here or following online by the God that we serve we call prostate by its name and we cause cancer by the God of heaven in the name of Jesus the Lord is ministering to me there is a lady you're not you're not you don't have a child but you are lactating you're lactating you don't have a child 
this is something you've gone to the hospital for in the name of jesus the son of the living god let that satanic occurrence come to an end now memory loss i'm hearing memory loss memory loss you forget things this is beginning to affect you in your place of work in the name of jesus i speak to you you have the mind of christ you have the mind of christ you have the mind of christ the lord is asking me to speak over someone i'm ministering healing but every time something good is about to happen you go to bed and you have a dream some person will come to molest you and the moment you wake up whether it's a job or some opportunity it just leaves in the name of jesus the son of the living god we severe you from the influence of those spirits in the name of jesus christ there is a couple the lord is asking me to minister to the problem affecting fertility is the man this is a problem that is common to men and yours is an acute problem you need a miracle this is not something drugs or supplement can correct you are not able to get your wife pregnant i want you to believe that the power of god is in this place god who quickened the body of abraham that isaac came even by natural means let that power that raised christ from the dead quicken your mortal body now quicken your mortal body now quicken your mortal body now i'm hearing a name zuera this is the name that i'm hearing zuera this should be another name in the name of jesus i pray for that person whether here or online every infirmity i'm saying this is something that has to do with your heart by the power that raised christ from the dead i bring you life and healing life and healing life and healing life and healing there is a woman god is asking me to pray for we're wrapping up um although this woman is on the big side it is not because of her weight that she's having mobility problems i'm seeing that there is a problem just right here i'm literally feeling the pain from here i'm not a medical doctor i might not be able to give it all the explanation needed but in the name of jesus that pain at your right side is affecting mama's mobility as the church of the lord jesus christ we cause that pain now we cause that pain now we cause that pain now hearing problems be healed now speech problems be healed now i feel set up in my heart to just speak this is not word of knowledge but it's just out of an information i know particularly around europe the case of mental health and autism these two cases is plaguing children particularly in their teenage we stand in faith right from here we are speaking to the nations but particularly we release our faith over the children in europe from nigeria to europe extending to canada america this plague this spirit of mental health destroying people at their productive years we call it by name and we curse it by the god of heaven we curse it by the god of heaven in the name of jesus christ can i declare favor over you Truly, there is a grace called favor. I want you to convince yourself that there is such a grace and it can rest upon a man. It brings systems and structure under pressure and compels men to treat you with benevolence, with kindness. There are three biblical indices to measure the presence of favor. Number one, unusual kindness when the grace for favor is on you men related and unrelated they are compelled by this grace to show you unusual kindness number two is unusual acceptance acceptance beyond the prejudices of tribe race gender this is what happens when you receive the grace for favor number three is unusual access access this is how you know that the favor of God has rested upon you. The Bible says, watch this now. It says, 
in Esther chapter 2 and verse 15, the B part says, And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Verse 17 says, And the king loved Esther more than all the virgins. He now placed a royal apparel upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Exodus 3 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty psalms 44 and verse 3 they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their arms save them but thou O lord and thy right hand the light of your countenance because thou hast a favor towards them i pray for you standing in partnership with the grace upon the angel in this house i decree and declare from the transforming church to all those who are connected I stand as a privileged steward of this grace in the name that is above all names let this grace for favor let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now unusual access let it rest upon you from the depth of my spirit I release that grace upon you let it work wonders in your life favor in your career favor in ministry favor in business favor in family even pharaoh must favor you help that woman in the name of jesus hear me by this prayer every door that has been closed over your life i stand upon the grace of the man of god and i speak to that door a fata be open a fata be open a fata be open 2024 hear the word of the lord be open now when jesus was born even as a baby with no ability to help himself that grace spoke and the magi right from where they were the bible says these were adults and they carried gifts of gold of frankincense and myrrh they were taking it to a baby not an adult i'm praying for you again this is an advantage we have in the kingdom may favor rest upon you and let it begin to speak from this night in the name of jesus favor that brings establishment favor that connects you to strategic men in the name of jesus ministers of the gospel let favor bring helpers for you help us of the war in the name of jesus christ this year i forbid you from being alone i forbid you from crying alone in the name of jesus the grace that helped hagar in the desert hagar was crying together with her baby and when god spoke to her she looked and saw an oasis springing forth i declare the oasis that must spring from your desert let it begin now can we pray i'm going to request um since we're praying on it together is that fine reverend sam okay please let me request the ushers please bring the prayer requests and then please bring it can you bring them all here? Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh. Rest on me, spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper, rest on me, rest on me. Hallelujah. We are going to pray on this by the grace of God and i remember doing this last year and i'm still going to request again 
I know this is the transforming church, but please allow me request particularly for Reverend Sam to make declarations that grace for influence. Many of you do not know that penetrating cultures and systems comes with a grace. No matter how gifted you are, our world is bound by tribal, ethno-cultural prejudices. It takes a grace many times beyond your gift to give you visibility and access beyond the shores of the territory wherein you are domiciled. Are we together? Yes. The things that you are going to be receiving is from the abundance of the grace and the mercy of God. There are many of you here who run corporations, but you've not been able to break into certain circles. It is not by might. It is not by power. I have seen many gifted people, worship ministers, several people. I've seen men and women of God sincere with character, integrity, sound in scripture. But the capacity to break beyond the barrier, there is an embargo. It's a territorial embargo. It forces men to look like the spirit of the city. It takes grace to lift people and to give you a flight beyond your limitation. I have seen people today that in, in all honesty, Reverend Sam, sometimes I wonder why are you at this level? And these are not people maybe you know they are prepared. I hope that one of the graces that we're, we're going to be praying for right now is the grace for visibility. The Bible says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. There are many of you right now, you are gifted, but you are with the wrong audience. The people around you do not have the discernment to appreciate what you carry, nor the capacity to reward what you carry. You need to be translocated by the Spirit to an environment where they have an appreciation for what you carry. It is very insulting and frustrating to be gifted and be around the wrong audience. They will not place value on what you carry. This is what honor is about. Honor compels men to perceive you correctly as touching your value and to reward you to match the extent of your sacrifice. Reverend Sam, <laughs> praise the name of the Lord. Do you believe in the power of agreement? Yeah. We're going to kneel and pray. And I want, no, 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 you don't have to kneel. Who will do the kneeling for you? Yours is to receive. Don't let any spirit distract you. These are the kinds of prophetic moments where people's destinies change. And this is where Satan steals into people's focus. And then fools them to be looking around. And then they miss their day of opportunity. Jacob said the Lord was in this place. And I knew not. Begin to pray in the spirit. Reverend Samson. in Jesus name amen I'd like you to just place your right hand on your head as you pray right now and let me say this the first person to ever walk up to me I say Reverend Sam there's a grace for cross-cultural influence on you was Pastor Kunle Shorion the second person was Apostle Selman recognizing that grace God has been so merciful we can't even share things in the public the Bible says he is the one that busts your confinements. From today, whatsoever is the reason for your confinement, it is over. I say the Lord busts your confinements. Servant of God, the Lord busts your confinements inside and outside the Lord burst your confinement 
single lady, single man, the Lord pause your confinement. I decree and declare from today, your branches will begin to spread over the walls. You are uncontainable. From today, you are unstoppable. From today, you are irresistible. From today, you begin to spread out. You begin to move out. You begin to advance. Begin to advance. Break barriers. Break limitations. Break obstacles. Move higher. Move forward. Advance. Progress. Flourish. Thrive. Locally and internationally. Go to the nations. Go to the nations. Your doors are open. Your gates are open. Your gates are open. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Please listen. The greatest way and the most potent way to transfer graces is through words. Hallelujah. Words. He said, if you had known of the dispensation of the oh, grace that yes, was given Lord, unto yes. me for you, word. Given to me for you. I want to release the grace for visibility. Listen to me. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. My God. The Bible says, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all that I command you this day. It says that you shall be exalted above all, not some, all the nations of the earth. From tonight, like a candle that has been lit, I forbid you from remaining small. Yes. I forbid you from remaining small. May that grace for visibility rest upon you. Access to the nations of the earth. Access to the hearts of kings. In the name of Jesus. Hey! Hallelujah. When Saul met with Samuel, yes. three things happened. Samuel said, is it not because the Lord has anointed yes. you to be a captain over his inheritance? I pray for you. The anointing that makes you a captain. The Bible calls it an oil of gladness that makes you above your fellows. May that grace rest upon you now. And Samuel told Saul, he said, as you return, the first thing is restoration that the donkey that has been missing would have been back home yeah. we prophesy that everything you have lost in 2023 we decree and declare let it be a balance brought forward for you yes. in the mighty name of jesus i speak restoration yes i speak restoration yes. i speak restoration yes. number two he said you will meet with three men uh, yeah, yeah. each of them holding two loaf yes sir. they will salute you and they will give, they will to, give you. to you and he says of them receive yes where are your helpers of hey! destiny we decree and declare yes, from january to december 2024 Shabbat enjoy the ministry Shabbat of Shabbat destiny Shabbat. help us yes enjoy the ministry of destiny yes! help us number three he says you will come to the garrison of the Philistines and that the spirit of God will come upon you and you will begin to prophesy yes. I pray for you yes. the unction that turns you to another man hey. another man in hey. business another man in ministry yes. another man in worship yes. another man in family another life man. let that grace rest upon you yes the grace that makes Abraham Abraham hey! the grace that makes Sarai Sarah the grace that makes Sipha Peter the grace that makes Jacob Israel the grace to become another man receive it in Jesus name yes! my God can I request before we pray on the request here yes. can you stretch your hands towards us 
the bible says that god will bless the works of your hands ah. your hand is a symbol of your productivity listen job said in the days of my youth ah. when his light his candle was upon my tabernacle yes. you see there were two kinds of light that job had one upon his head and another upon his path yes. the one on his head was for illumination the one on his path was for direction and the benefit of the light upon his head was seen in the works of his hands i want to pray for you ah. in the name of jesus yes. we release our faith yes. nothing dies in your hands nothing, nothing. nothing dies in your hands nothing. nothing dies in your hands yes. let blessing meet blessing on your hands hey. may the lord make your hands strong yes may the lord prosper the works of your yes. hands in the name of jesus yes. My God. stretch your hands in this direction father i lift up this request before you and we ask that you who answers prayer will answer every prayer here grant your children their hearts desires amen let the sick be healed amen let your doors be open return with testimonies of liftings your promotion comes early your visa granted early your project is finished early the land enters your hands what you've been waiting for receive your request is granted your request is granted your joy coming now your doors are open your favor is granted rise to the next level rise to the next level enter your next dimension be supernaturally married i decree increase on every side multiplication no more delays no more delays no more affliction no more reproach it is done hallelujah please allow me to release one more grace before we are done the greatest investment of the spirit upon my life is the grace for encounters the Bible says, blessed is the man that God causes to approach him. You see, if all we receive are just things, we did not receive much. There is a grace that compels men. You see, hunger is a gift. Hunger is proof of health. You are about to receive something very heavy right now. The first thing that happens when a, an individual is sick, is the loss of appetite you use the loss of appetite as a layman's way of diagnosing the presence of sickness that means when you lose spiritual hunger is a sign that something is wrong and there are people because of the vicissitudes of life because of the the challenges the wear and tear of life many here have lost their passion passion for the things of god passion for prayer passion for fasting passion for the word they've lost touch with consecration they've lost touch with all that makes men mighty we stand in agreement and we pray for you in the name that is above all names yes, Lord. Yes. fire from heaven hey! that reignites your prayer life yes fire from heaven fire that reignites your word study yes. life fire from heaven yes that reignites your passion yes. for god receive it now hey. receive it now hey. receive hunger yes hunger for oh. church yes hunger for god hey. hunger for the things of god hey. hunger for the study of hey. the word hunger for prayer hey. in the name of jesus hey. That regardless the level you have attained in the spirit yes, Lord. I plant in you from tonight a holy dissatisfaction hey. ah, let it drive you to fast hey. let it drive you to pray 
let it drive you to fast let it drive you to pray let it drive you to fast let it drive you to pray let it drive you to study let it drive you to give in the name of Jesus if Reverend Sam will lend me one more minute I want to cause the spirit of greed and connection to material things this may look like an unnecessary prayer but listen carefully there are many who do not have because God knows that if he gives them it will have them oh my god are we together yes God fights everything that takes his place even if he's the one who gave you materialism is not having materials materialism is getting to a point where you exalt materials to be the God in your life replacing the position of the Christ and this is the tragedy of many believers ministry can become an idol hey. yes sir preaching can become an idol business can become an idol nothing in itself destroys until it is connected to a heart condition that exalts it above God I want to pray by this prayer a circumcision will happen to someone listen there are many of you God wants to prosper you he wants to open doors but you see the hindrance to your becoming and to your entering the next level is not necessarily demonic is that there is a heart condition God wants to prepare so that when the billions and the millions come when the exaltation and the increase comes you will remember the Lord your God that's what he told the people I pray for you every mundane connection to things that has made you exalt money position titles above and beyond the Christ we dethrone it now we dethrone it now we dethrone it now every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome finally i declare before i let reverend sam continue by this time next year gilgal 2025 except if you don't plan to be alive but for as long as you plan to be alive i prophesy to you return 10 times better return 10 times better spiritually financially yes. career wise yes. the 10 times better anointing yes. let it rest upon you in the name of jesus hey. Give Jesus a big hand of hand clap. Hallelujah. Reverend Sam has given me the permission of a minute or two before I allow him continue to do an altar call. I really believe in salvation. And I want to give someone an opportunity right now to make Jesus please let's keep standing I know that we've we've been standing for a while let's just honor those who are coming um, there's no point cajoling you need Jesus you need him now you need him fast hallelujah the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have life everlasting life eternal there has to be someone here you're outside you're in this auditorium and for the many following online you're saying apostle reverend sam if you will give me an opportunity i truly want to make it right with jesus and then i'm also calling on those who are saying i want to rededicate my life to jesus i have entered into this new year i do not want it to remain as last year or the years before i truly want to make a sincere unashamed decision to follow jesus Wherever you are, I'll count one to five. I want you to leave your seat. Run and come and stand right in front of us here. Do not wait for anyone to be the first. Win that war finally. I begin my counting. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Two. Young and old, male and female, come. You're outside, please come. Allow those who are coming, if they are coming for the altar call,
Come. Let's celebrate them. Don't be tired of clapping. Three. When I count five, we begin the prayer. For someone who is making this decision by way of television, you're following online. I want you to participate in the prayer. Congratulations for your desire to make Jesus Lord of your life. And perhaps you are seated and you're saying, Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed, afraid of my friend, afraid of those seated around me. I like you to leave them and come. This is the business between you and Jesus. Make your way to the front. Apostle, I'm unsure if I'm saved or not. Come. You can join them and have the assurance of salvation right here, right now. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your bold decision. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I salute your courage. You are standing before Jesus, the son of the living God. May I please request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender high above your head and say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. One more time. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Tonight, tonight I have heard your word. I have heard your word. I declare, I declare that I love you that I love with, you. All my heart. with all my heart. I believe, I believe that you are the son of God. That you are the son of I, God. Believe I believe that you died for my sin. That you died for my I sin. believe. I believe that you rose again that you rose for, my again justification. for my justification right now, right now I, receive I receive jesus into my heart, into my heart as, my savior, as my savior my lord, my lord and, my king. and my king i declare, I declare that the power of power sin Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you because your word declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away by the authority of your word and upon their confession of faith. We declare their sins forgiven in Jesus' name. We call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. The empowerment to live a victorious Christian life we release upon you right now. We call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, may I request that you please move to my right. My left, that will be your right. There are counselors who will have a word with you very, very quickly. And then you will be back to your seat. Let's give them a big, big God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Reverend Sam, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you sincerely. Thank you, the Transforming Church. May God bless you. Happy 2024. Please, everybody, please, let's remain standing. No movement. Take it out. One of the mysteries... One of the mysteries of the heavens we have committed ourselves to doing that this is called gilgal is a place of the rolling away of reproach and god has been so faithful to us from the beginning of this program till date so much so much released on us i think you need to go and spend time over the weekend please no fasting tomorrow just use the time to just play the messages and just listen to them okay some of you have fasted crazy this week, like you're going to die. Stay alive. Amen. All right. I want to do something for three set of people here. I want, to, I want to have the man of God pray for us. I will not let him go. You know, when I was coming here, I don't know why the Lord just dropped in my heart. A particular amount in my heart the Lord just told me take it and it happens to me every year so my year always begins in Gilgal my financial year always begin in Gilgal and I can't tell you what God has done for me I was sharing with one of the pastors last year after the meeting the Lord laid on our heart my wife and I just to be with apostle on behalf of me and my family just to put something in his hands I can't tell you what God did in 2023. It's, it's, it's the way it works. No matter what anybody says out there. The less is blessed by the greater. It's just no. Abraham, when Melchizedek began to say, you are blessed of the most high God. Abraham did not just say amen. 
the Bible says, quickly call his servant. He said, don't just say amen to this kind of prayer. He said, everything we have now, let's take a portion of it and let's not let this man of God go. Let us sow into this atmosphere. This is not merchandising anything. This is the principle of the kingdom. Stand. This is not time to sit down. This is not a year to be poor. You, you can't afford poverty this year. Already there's so much poverty in town. We need to function by superior principles to set us apart. There are businesses that need to scale new heights this year. And business owners. There are ministries and ministers that need to scale new heights. Whether it's a thousand dollars God put in your heart, a million naira, more than that, whatever it is. Everyone who wants, please apostle, can we have you upstairs? Sir? I just want you to pray. Sorry, my wife will come on, be on our behalf. See, I, I believe, I believe in the thousand dollars. I believe that. But when I was coming today, the Lord said to me, take two more for every single month. The Lord said to me here, yeah, 12. I want everyone who is saying, Pastor, I am sowing into this season. I will flourish this year. I will thrive. I will go international. My business will scale new heights. I will break boundaries. I am busting confinement. I carry favor on my life this year. Every one of us who is saying, I see myself. This is where it all begins in Gilgal. Quickly, whatever God is putting on your mind, please at your level, God is speaking to you at your level. There will be no death in your camp. See, we don't need to preach too much. Those who know what God is saying, you just leave your seat immediately. The spirit of materialism leave you. Listen, let me tell you this. Hold on. There are some of you here, for the first time in your life, do something you have never done. Give something you've never given. Just break the barrier. Just break it. There are people watching me here where God is taking your business to this year. If I'm hearing in my spirit, there will be no death in your organization. The Lord is saying to me, every attempt to bring your organization down this year, the adversary will be coming too late. The adversary will be coming too late. Please be very clear. If it's not something you have here, but you're going to do it between now and Sunday, you want to go and get some of you want to go to the nations but you're not so into the nations there are some of you trusting god for positions offices and you're like god i want to sit in that office these things don't come just cheaply the people contending with you you have no idea what they are offering i didn't need to cajole you you understand the message you understand what you are doing quickly find your way down here i want you to quietly bow your heart before the lord and tell the lord what you are doing tell him what you're giving some of you already came with it some of you came prepared god bless you some of you came prepared if you're writing a check write it in the name of the transforming church write it we're gonna we're gonna reach out to God's servant in our own very special way. Everyone online, they're going to put account details on the screen. Please make sure you take advantage of that. Everyone watching online, you want to be a part of what God is doing here. I will turn it over to Apostle so he can pray over the people of God. This year must be different. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to believe in what you are doing because it works. Some of us sadly may have been victims of manipulations from men women of god unfortunately some of us may have given but not with understanding and it did not bring any profit in but i want you to know that this is how it works let god be true and all men liars there is no other way it works when god wanted many sons he gave his son the most important thing is that you do what you do out of revelation this is a church of integrity and I love Reverend Sam. I believe what we're doing. I want to speak over your seats. Hallelujah. I want to speak over your seats. And I want you to believe. You will marvel and wonder at what God does. Yes. 
this is a grace that we have received though i say this sincerely god's grace can rest upon you even in the area of your finances and you will marvel and wonder at the things that god does father the bible says you don't have to kneel you just stand the bible says in second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 it says and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having sufficiency in all things that you are bound to every good work mm. the spirit of god is able to bless you beyond finances because there are some of you the truth is that your challenge is not finances god is able to give your seed another body you can sow a seed and reap favor you can sow a seed and reap healthy children it is true therefore in the name of jesus i stand in faith with god's servant for the many who are here in front the many who yes. are connecting online yes father you are not a fraudster you do not defraud men yes we stand upon the integrity of scripture your people have responded some of them are bringing their sacrifices some of them are bringing their all i pray in the name of jesus the waster by this giving is rebuked over your life the waster is rebuked over your life in the name of jesus i give your seeds a voice in the realm of the spirit i command it to gather its kind and to return to you a thousandfold the level with which you are giving now that will be your least level you will rise in the spirit by the favor of god in the name of jesus we put systems and structures under pressure that God will cause men to deal with you favorably some of you by this giving you will go to bed and God will give you ideas God will show you things to do God will connect you strategically to opportunities but by all means in the name of Jesus let your giving return to you pressed down shaken together running over in the name of Jesus I bless your seeds I bless your heart, I bless your harvest, and I bless you. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Please, what will encourage those of you that want to use account. Thank you for watching this video to the end. I know you have been blessed powerfully by this video. Please subscribe, like, and share this message with others. And remember that Jesus loves you no matter what you are going through, no matter what might be happening in your life. I want you to know that there is nobody on earth that is without a problem. But the fact is that God can still be with you in the midst of your problem. God can still be with you in the midst of your storm. So for you not to give up in trusting in God is the key to life. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So I, I, I pray in the name of Jesus that the grace of God be sufficient for you. No matter what you are going through, He will give you the grace to pass through fire with confidence. He will take you out of your trouble, the ones that you are not able to bear. He will take you out of it. He will give you joy. He will give you peace. He will sustain you. He will provide for you in everything. The Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will come to your to your aid speedily. The Lord will satisfy your mouth with good things. He will satisfy your mouth with testimonies. You, you will be a blessing to your world. You will be a blessing to your generation. You are blessed in your going out. You are blessed in your coming in. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are 